And so, uh, okay, let me, uh, uh, so thank you for accepting to, to give a talk to uh, uh, online here in, in Singapore. So just, uh, 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 just a short introduction. So you are professor at the Nanjing University and you have received your uh, PhD from University of Kansas in, in uh, 2002. Then you join uh, MIT as a postdoc uh, associated in the research lab of electronics. And then you uh, uh, go back to China and then you get a position in Nanjing University as a professor in 2005. And so you, uh, uh, Professor Yu is, is one of the pioneers in the field of supraconducting uh, quantum computing based on Josephson junction and, and squids. And uh, in particular, with, with other collaborators, you have realized very important experiment, which is the first radio oscillation on the superconducting phase qubit. So I think this was one of your uh, work uh, during your PhD time in the University of Kansas. And uh, so you, you are, of course, very active in, in, in this domain. You have a lot of publication, more than 100 uh, peer reviewed papers, uh, uh, peer health and science. And, so I, I think you, uh, so today you will uh, discuss about, uh, about uh, monopoles, about uh, topology. So, I mean, in, in, in usually people, uh, so uh, uh, when they are discussed about topology and, and geometrical uh, aspect, they have in mind, uh, so uh, gauge field, which are abelian or non-abelian, and they have in mind also uh, uh, vector, uh, uh, vector operators. And uh, I think uh, we know that this concept can be generalized to something more, uh, to some objects which are uh, uh, more complex than a vector, so a tensor, for example. And uh, you are, uh, I think, one of the first, if it's uh, not the first uh, 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 um, researcher that uh, observed this tensor monopole in superconducting qubit. So I'm very happy uh, to have you today to discuss about this, this aspect of this very original uh, work in topology. So thank you for being here. And please uh, 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 just, just start, that, start your talk. Thank you. OK. OK, thank you, uh, Professor Korkowski. Thank you for the invitation. And I'm very happy to uh, give a talk about our recent work on the tensor multiples. So, uh, Today I'm going to talk the observation of uh, tensor model with a superconducting quantum circuit. So uh, this is the outline of my talk. So in the first part, I will give a short introduction of superconducting quantum circuits. Then I will um, show how to simulation topological materials with the superconducting quantum uh, circuits. And uh, finally, I will uh, show how to uh, our recent work, the observation of uh, uh, tensor multiples with superconducting qubit. So we know uh, the superconducting qubits or all the superconducting quantum circuits are uh, based on the Joseph junctions. So uh, they are uh, solid state devices and they have advantage of the scalable and uh, also have an advantage in the uh, control and uh, the flexibility. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, the superconducting um, quantum circuits are the uh, very uh, prom promising candidates for the quantum uh, computing. Uh, recently, uh, the Google uh, groups uh, demonstrate the quantum supremacy with super dynamic circuit. So um, basically they are, they are, what they are doing is they uh, use, the, use the random circuit sampling. So uh, they use the uh, 53 uh, uh, qubits and uh, they demonstrate a random sam a circuit sampling um, model. And they uh, use their uh, superconducting chip, quantum chip. They can uh, uh, realize the, the finish the job 
uh, within uh, 200 seconds. But uh, if we, we use the uh, classic uh, supercomputer, for example, the summit, it take, will take uh, uh, 10,000 years for uh, finish this work. So uh, this is uh, actually the uh, very uh, big advantage, um, uh, advance for the quantum computing, basically. That's the first time demonstrate we can do uh, something use quantum computer, which is uh, much faster than a classic uh, computer. Uh, and uh, on the chip, like the, on the quantum chip, the fidelity they, they have realized for the single qubit gate is uh, um, larger than uh, um, uh, 99.97 percent. So, and uh, for the two qubit gate, it's uh, 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 a little bit lower. So it's uh, almost line. Uh, 99.5%. So this is the state of arts of the superconducting quantum chip. But uh, uh, even though their, achieve, uh, their achievement is uh, very exciting, but uh, uh, we still, actually we're still far away from the practical quantum computing. In this diagram, well, I, uh, we show the, for realize the practical quantum computing, we need a, a, a lot of qubits. So, uh, and also we uh, need the uh, accurate for control the qubit also is very high. So basically it's uh, when uh, usually the talk about the two Qs, why is the quantity of the qubit? And the other is, uh, the quality of the of the control. So uh, in this uh, uh, plot, we uh, we see if we uh, want to do some uh, useful, uh, actually uh, useful quantum computer uh, computing. So uh, we need um, more than a thousand qubits. And also the accuracy of the qubit we need is uh, larger than um, um, ninety nine percent. So uh, right now, uh, uh, if we want to do the uh, general quantum computer, quantum, quantum computing, so we uh, which usually we say that we need uh, use the full tolerant quantum computing. We need a um, more than uh, millions of qubits because we need the overhead, uh, we need the redundant qubits to do the error correction. So if we need to do that, we need uh, um, millions of qubits. So this is the blue part of this uh, plot. Uh, this is uh, uh, very hard, far away. So I think at least more than five years or 10 years, something. Like but uh, in the recent, we can do it. What we can do is um, in the middle of this plot, it's about a hundred qubits or uh, uh, several hundred qubits. And the uh, control accuracy is about 99%. Uh, so we call this the uh, risk uh, recently. So uh, it's a noise, noisy, uh, intermediate uh, scale, scale uh, quantum computer. So, uh, but uh, in this range, uh, it still need uh, improve the control accuracy and the qubit number, because right now the largest qubit number is about 50 or say 60, but uh, uh, the accuracy is still limited by the two cube, uh, two gate operation. So it's still uh, 99.5, uh, something like that. So in order to do the um, uh, um, useful quantum computing, so we still need to improve the two qubit gate operation. 
So the right now the parameter to to uh, the criteria to judge the the uh, quantum uh, the quantum computing. So is the uh, two Qs or sometimes it's quantum called the quantum volume. So the quantum volume is proposed by the uh, the IBM group. So it's basically the uh, it's uh, 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 contain all the uh, aspect of the quantum computing. So it's the, the required the qubit number. So the qubit number. And they put the qubit long, uh, these qubits in this kind of also the, the in the form of random circuit. So they do the operation for single qubit and the two qubit randomly. And uh, for uh, the one single qubit for uh, operation com composed with uh, two qubit operation, they call the one laser. So if you do the uh, randomly this operation, you uh, measure the fidelity of the, uh, the results. And uh, if the uh, fidelity is larger than some, uh, some volume, then you say uh, this uh, operation is heavy output. So uh, in the IBM, experiment they have demonstrated they use six qubit uh, in the, the 27 qubit chip and they demonstrate the six layer so, so uh, they uh, they and obtain the the heavy output so they uh, using the, their uh, calculation formula then they, they obtained the uh, quantum volume is two to six power, so it's uh, uh, sixty six. So that's uh, why they got their uh, sixty six uh, quantum volume. But uh, you look at their uh, quantum chip, their single qubit is still uh, uh, about ninety nine point uh, nine seven percent. But the two qubit gain is a little bit. Uh, lower than the Google uh, group. So it's uh, about 99.3. So uh, that's what we can get right now. So it's six, uh, four, uh, 64 quantum volume. So in order to do the useful quantum computing or the practical quantum computing, so we need uh, the quantum volume much larger than this. So right now we're still uh, far away from the uh, practical quantum computing. So we can call the, uh, maybe we can call the, the right now it's uh, the era before quantum computer. So the, the question is what can we do use quantum, use the, this uh, uh, very, very uh, preliminary quantum chip we all use qubits. So uh, here I will show we can actually we can do some uh, quantum simulation use this uh, uh, very uh, uh, small quantum qubit small qubit number. So we, for example, in here actually we just uh, use uh, uh, one uh, qubit. So we can do the quantum simulation. Uh, we can use uh, to the simulating the energy band and uh, also the topology of topology of the uh, con condensed matter system, like the condensed matter uh, system. So these are some examples of uh, our uh, measured energy band of, of the uh, some. Uh, topological uh, material. So we know that the topological uh, topology is right now is a hot um, topic in the condensed matter physics. 
we have the topological uh, materials like the topological insulator and the well semi-metals and the direct semi-metals. For these uh, topological materials, we usually have the spin orbital coupling, so, so Hamiltonian. We can write down the, the uh, tight band um, uh, Hamiltonian of this material usually like this uh, form. So, uh, but the, uh, this Hamiltonian looks uh, uh, not uh, very complicated, but uh, in uh, order to realize, fabricate this material or the synthesize this uh, topological material, it's very difficult usually. Uh, for example, for, for this Hamiltonian, we only have two terms, but uh, it's uh, very uh, difficult to fabricate this material. And also, uh, uh, even you can fa fabricate these materials, it's difficult to directly characterize the topology. So it's very difficult in the con condensed matter physics to directly uh, measure this um, topological uh, invariant, for example. It's very difficult to direct measure it. Uh, people usually use some uh, other uh, uh, experiment to to indirectly to, to prove to demonstrate these topological uh, properties, and also uh, um, it's uh, even uh, difficult to tune the parameters in situ. So if you can fabricate these uh, topological materials, um, the lambda it's very difficult to to tune the this lambda. Lambda is a controllable parameter, so it's very difficult to tune the, uh, the lambda uh, in situ. So, in, because you you fabricate materials very uh, already very hard. So, but uh, use the uh, quantum qubit, quantum circuit, superconductor kind of quantum circuit. We can uh, measure. Uh, we can simulate this Hamiltonian relatively easy. So uh, why is that? So um, we can just see the Hamiltonian of the the system. So uh, the tight band model of this uh, Hamiltonian basically is a spin in a magnetic field. So we can write down the, the Hamiltonian of spin in the magnetic field very general in a very general form, right? And uh, on the other hand, uh, driven my, uh, quantum system, a driven quantum system, uh, the Hamiltonian can be write down like this. And uh, they compare with these two. So the B is uh, the component of magnetic field and the omega here is basically the, the determined by the um, driven field. So if the electromagnetic field, so, uh, so usually the amplitude and the frequency and the detuning will determine this uh, omega. So, uh, so this Hamiltonian is a, in a very general general form, and uh, the for example, uh, the, the previous example, I, we see we only uh, show the two two terms, two directions. So the uh, spin, so S, the spin component S, and we. Just uh, uh, use the sigma that represents the spin, the, the component of spin. So this is sigma is a poly poly uh, magnetic, and uh, the k is just uh, the the uh, uh, wave vector. So. So. Uh, uh, you, uh, from this, we can see we can uh, connect the uh, 
condensed matter physics with superconducting quantum circuits. Because for a superconducting quantum circuit, uh, we can uh, easily realize this, this uh, the, the Hamiltonian in the middle, because we just uh, use the microwave to drive this system, and we can uh, easily obtain this Hamiltonian. So, uh, use this method, we, we uh, can connect these two, two area using um, uh, and do some interesting work. So the condensed, uh, these two fields are both a very hot field. The quantum, uh, uh, the condensed matter physics, right now is a very hot area. And uh, the superconducting quantum circuit also is very hot, hot right now. Um, before our work, basically, uh, people think about this, uh, the superconducting qubit uh, basically is a solid state device. So after you fabricate it, it's uh, on a chip. So it's very difficult to move it right now. It's, uh, okay. So it's not like uh, um, uh, uh, cold, uh, uh, cold atom, right? Uh, so the cold atom, they, it's uh, uh, all it's like uh, optic uh, system. So it's uh, very easy to to move the, the atom. But uh, for superconducting qubits uh, or quantum circuit, the artificial uh, quantum artificial atoms. And they after you fabricate, they just uh, on the on a chip, so it's difficult to move it. So before our work, uh, people uh, mm, uh, haven't uh, find uh, connections between them because usually the condensed matter physics so don't uh, think the the superconducting circuit quantum circuit works are uh, that interesting. And also the superconductor quantum circuit uh, people uh, uh, usually uh, can't do uh, some simulation to simulate the uh, the condensed matter physics. But our work connect these two interesting fields together. So the the experiment is actually is not relative. Uh, uh, standard, so it's a standard experiment for the superconducting qubits. So here we use uh, the superconducting transmon. The transmon uh, basically we can think it's a uh, 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 artificial atom. Uh, it, mm, it, there are many energy levels, but these energy levels uh, are uh, not uh, equally spacing. So we can isolate two of uh, Two levels, two of them, uh, or we can choose three, four as we want. So, uh, for the uh, transmon, so it's a, a superconducting um, circuit. So it's uh, uh, we can consider it's an atom put in a cavity. So this uh, is a, a circuit QED called the circuit QED. It can uh, to, uh, fully described by the quantum electromagnetic dynamic. So uh, here the cavity here uh, actually is uh, in our uh, experiment. The cavity, the the row of the ca cavity, the or the effect of this cavity is just uh, for the convenience of control or the increase, uh, another is to increase the coherence of the, the atom. So, uh, so this is a circuit diagram, uh, the, the schematic diagram of our um, system, the control. We use the AWG and IQ mixer to um, generate the microwave pulse we want so, and uh, the microwave is sent to the qubit, uh, the quantum superconducting quantum circuit. So, 
and uh, we just need to control the, the amplitude of microwave and the phase of microwave and the uh, frequency of microwave. Then we can uh, get the uh, pulse uh, uh, Hamiltonian we want. I will show later. And uh, uh, then uh, after we uh, obtain the the Hamiltonian simulated the Hamiltonian. They will have to we have to measure the system. Uh, uh, for the measurement, the it's uh, also standard for this uh, circuit QED experiment. Basically, we're sending in the microwave, and uh, the qubit state will affect the trans transmission of this uh, uh, cavity. So uh, the, there is a small shift of the frequency. So using this uh, frequency shift, we can read out the qubit state in even in the, on the zero or on the one state. So that's the whole experiment part. So uh, the below are some uh, uh, experiment, uh, experiment result, typical experiment results. So first we can demonstrate Rabi oscillations. So we can change the pulse width, microwave pulse width. So this is unresonant Rabi oscillation. So we are sending the um, magnetic field. And so the, uh, the microwave uh, to uh, resonant to resonant with this uh, uh, Qubit uh, energy spacing, so we can uh, generate rapid oscillation between energy levels, and we do the measurement and see this uh, population oscillating back and forth between two states. And uh, we can uh, also measure the uh, relaxation time of these uh, uh, qubits or, or the or the superconducting kind of quantum circuits, and also uh, the the right part is. Uh, uh, Ramsey type experiment. So uh, basically, we can use this uh, experiment to measure the the defacing time of the qubits. So we put the system in the in the middle and let it evolve, and then uh, put it back to measure the population. And we can see the the defacing time of the of the system. And also we can use this Ramsey type to calibrate the, the microwave frequency of, uh, of the all the energy level spacing, the detuning between microwave frequency and the level spacing. So, so before our experiment, we do uh, careful calibration because uh, I said before the amplitude and the frequency and the phase of microwave is very important for the control accuracy. So uh, use this, uh, uh, we calibrate the, the parameter before uh, experiments. So uh, this is, uh, uh, use the Rabi frequency. So basically we are calibrate the amplitude of the microwave. And also use the Ramsey uh, frequency. We can calibrate the microwave frequency. And uh, we can uh, uh, use this uh, uh, plot to tune this uh, IQ voltage to see the phase, to get the phase of the, the, the uh, microwave. So all the parameter we need, we, we have to carefully calibrate them. So uh, for uh, the experiment, we first measure the energy band of the system of the Hamiltonian. So uh, when we simulate the Hamiltonian, we want to measure the energy band of this Hamiltonian first. So the measure the energy band uh, we uh, call the uh, we use the spin injection uh, uh, technique. So basically, we can uh, we use the zero, one, two 
three levels in our superconducting circuit. So uh, the zero basically is the zero state, is the uh, uh, initialized state. So all, all the we auxiliary state. And the first we uh, use a microwave pulse to, uh, we inject a microwave pulse to resonant or the uh, almost resonant with uh, one and the two, so level one and level two. So level one and level two basically construct the two level system, right? Two level system. If we apply a microwave field, uh, which is uh, uh, interacting with this two level system, we can write down the Hamiltonian and uh, which is uh, driven a uh, two level system, driven two level system. And the microwave uh, amplitude, we control microwave amplitude frequency under the detuning. So basically we obtain the Hamiltonian, which is uh, given by this uh, a driven, a driven quantum system. Uh, for this, uh, uh, actually right now the, uh, we uh, uh, input the constructed pulse. The state zero, uh, state one and two is are uh, empty states, right? With our system initializing in zero state, right? Right. So we uh, after we uh, input the construct pulse, we get the uh, Hamiltonian, which basically is uh, what we want. But they are empty system, empty, right? So they are empty band, but only the Hamiltonian take the form of what we want. So then uh, we uh, want to detect the, the Hamiltonian, right? We want to detect the Hamiltonian. Then we inject a probe, probe by microwave, so like the purple, purple, uh, so we inject this uh, uh, probe microwave. When the uh, probe microwave fre uh, frequency matches the energy level spacing between the zero and the, the uh, eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. Because when we inject a construct a, uh, mm -hmm. microwave, so we form, uh, we form the Hamiltonian and the system basically is uh, uh, go to the, the eigenstate, right? Go to the eigenstate of that, high, uh, that, eye, that Hamiltonian. So if we want to the measure the eigen energy, we just uh, send in the proof um, microwave to drive the system to the uh, zero, to the eigenstate, the new eigenstate. So uh, then we just uh, tune the frequency of probe microwave gradually. We can map out all the eigen energies of the uh, Hamiltonian we want, right? So, so this is the example of the uh, eigenstate we measure. So because when we get the effect of Hamiltonian of the uh, one and the two, we get the, there are two, uh, for two level system, we have two eigen energies and then we prove it. We observe this uh, observ observation, uh, absorb uh, peaks from zero to these two eigen states. So we just uh, uh, obtain this uh, spectrum. Then, uh, we tune these uh, parameters, we tune Kx and Ky. This uh, one spectrum uh, is for the uh, one typical uh, one uh, value, one selected value Kx and Ky. So, and uh, also the lambda. So what we do is go, we're going to gradually change the, the Kx, Ky, and lambda. So change this parameter as we want, right? 
So uh, then do this uh, spectral measurement. We get all these resonant peaks. So we can put all these uh, uh, red resin peaks uh, in a three, like a, uh, we put them in uh, in a single plot. So it's a contour, like a contour plot, right? Uh, this uh, this is uh, the the one direction is kx changing with kx, and the one direction is changing with ky, and uh, the energy here. The energy here we can see the, the, it's basically the, the, the eigen energies we observe the the, the peaks we take these peaks the, the position of these peaks and they will put put the uh, uh, in a single plot so that's the energy band of this Hamiltonian right energy band because what we measured are all the eigen energies of this Hamiltonian. So that's basically the energy band. And here we just measure the, the as this uh, energy structure in the um, first Brillouin zone, right? And we can see the uh, four uh, direct point directly observed this direct, uh, direct cone, right? And direct points four direct cones, four direct points, uh, because these are periodic, right? So we have mm, so the position at zero plus or minus uh, pi over two and pi plus minus pi over two. So they have four uh, direct points. So this is, is an example of, uh, of how to measure the, this, uh, how to simulate this Hamiltonian and obtain the, the energy band of this uh, Hamiltonian. So uh, now uh, this is a, a technique what we developed. And then uh, we can also measure the, the uh, topolo uh, topological invariant in these uh, spatial points. So we'll just measure the, the and the, the wave, form, wave function, yeah, we can uh, tomograph the, the quantum states, then we can obtain this, uh, calculate the topological invariant, invariant in this, uh, uh, in any point. So that in this technique we, we uh, proposed, then we can do the more things using this technique. So uh, then we uh, let's look at the quantum geometric tensor. So uh, the uh, quantum geometric tensor is given by this uh, equation, and uh, basically they uh, have uh, four two uh, parts. So the real part, so the real part, is called the quantum metric. And the imagined part uh, basically is proportional to the Berry coverage. So, and also the real part is uh, uh, called the, the quantum distance. It defines the quantum distance between two nearby states. So if you do calculate this uh, two nearby uh, quantum, the quantum state that evolved along this part, and you calculate the, the, the waveform a wave function and the uh, you, you do the calculation and find the, the real part of this uh, uh, quantum geometric tensor is the just the, the quantum distance between two nearby states. So uh, the Berry curvature is uh, uh, has been uh, studied uh, extensively. So we study the Berry phase it's, uh, and the topologic states, and uh, use this to do quantum computation and also the the gauge field. And for the uh, real part, the quantum metric. 
usually it's less uh, investigated. It, uh, and also it, uh, it's related with uh, the, these uh, general relativities and the Euler characteristic number, quantum phase transition and quantum fission information. But uh, experimentally, uh, this quantum metric uh, is less studied. So uh, using all technique, uh, technique uh, we use uh, we develop uh, technique. Uh, we do some experiment to measure the uh, barrier curvatures. So we uh, simulate the uh, um, Maxwell uh, type uh, the semi-metals and also this uh, semi-metal with half links. So, uh, and uh, and uh, so recently we uh, do some work for the uh, quantum metric. So for the quantum metric. And uh, uh, as I said, the, the Berry curvature is related with the, the chain number. So uh, for this, uh, it's, uh, the chain number is uh, usually uh, for uh, uh, 3D uh, Dirac monopole and uh, uh, for a vector field, for a vector field, we have 3D vector field, we have 5D uh, vector field. The, the multiples there is related with uh, Berry curvature, Berry curvature. So I know so we uh, call it the the uh, the ten number. But uh, the uh, for the tensor uh, field, we have tensor multiple, and the tensor multiple uh, is related with quantum metric, quantum metric. And we have this uh, uh, topological invariant, which is called uh, the DD uh, number. So, so the important part here basically is measure the, the quantum metric, the quantum metric. Uh, for measure the Berry coverture, we uh, usually use the interference technique and all the linear response theory. But uh, the, for the quantum metric, uh, we usually use the, the sudden quench or the periodic drives. These are two methods proposed by the theorist. But uh, here we realized the, the experimentally using superconducting quantum circuits. So we uh, uh, so these two papers. One is measure the barrier curvature, and the one is using quantum metric. So our recent uh, paper. So uh, first, uh, let uh, let me uh, show how to measure the quantum metric with the sudden quench. So basically, uh, is we just detect the transition probability after a sudden quench. So uh, as the definition of the, the, the um, quantum metric, we can say it's just uh, the proportional to the uh, uh, wave function overlap, overlap. Of a sudden uh, of two quantum uh, states of two quantum states, so we uh, just uh, uh, give a, a, a small perturbation or a small sudden quench to the quantum states. Then we can measure the, the quantum metric. So this is the, the principle of the measurement, basic. So uh, we, uh, in order to measure the, the whole uh, quantum metric, we have to uh, quench the system to the different direction parameters. So for example, it's 
on the two for the two level system, we have a block sphere, so we can um, quench it along the uh, longitudinal and uh, transverse. So this uh, theta along this theta quench, I can also uh, sudden quench along this phi direction or along both direction. But uh, this just uh, by by tune the parameter. So then uh, measure the pro exciting probability, detect the, the transition probability. So we can uh, find the the element of this uh, uh, metric is proportional to this uh, transition probability. So, so these are the parameters we use. The, the decoherence time of our uh, system is uh, uh, is uh, about several microseconds. So the uh, the control uh, pulse is about nanosecond. So these are the uh, quantum metric we measure experimentally, and uh, also we compare with the theory. So they are uh, agreement. They agree uh, will. So so this is the uh, theta theta and phi phi theta phi. So this these are uh, for the typical for the for, for the two level system, and we. Uh, we demonstrate in the in the this paper so in this paper, and also another method we demonstrate in the same paper to to, uh, to de detect the exciting rate during the the weak period of driving. So these are basically a very similar method that just with the, the, the perturbation is periodic or there is a sudden quench. But uh, uh, from the experimental results, we can see the, the sudden quench has uh, 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 larger uh, precision. So it's more, uh, the, the fluctuation for the sudden quench is much better than this periodic driving. So uh, later on, we uh, we also, we all use the the, the sudden quench method, sudden quench technique. So the the advantage of sudden quench is so we have um, you know, a short time, short time. So we with the quench time is uh, we can choose a very short quench time, and uh, we uh, we have uh, this measurement and uh, uh, the accuracy so it's better so, and also we can measure the, the 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 chain number of this system so it's and uh, then uh, for uh, that's for two level system then uh, for the uh, Tensor multiple, we have four dimension. We have uh, we have the, the so it's uh, with four dimension. So forty, it's a forty uh, system, and here uh, the the Hamiltonian. So it's given by this effect. Of, uh, the experiment Hamiltonian we want to simulate is like this. So. Uh, we can uh, write down, uh, we can simplify it and it's a three by three uh, uh, So uh, for a three by three uh, uh, this, uh, then we can uh, use the three level so it's a three level system. Uh, we, we use three levels of, of quantum circuits. 
And uh, remember, we also have another level, auxiliary level, to initialize the system. So we use uh, the, the one, two, three, four levels in the quantum, uh, superconducting quantum circuits. So we first, we can do the, uh, the measure the uh, energy band. So these are the energy band we measure by tune the parameters, we see the topological transitions. So the, the, from the same, uh, 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 wheel semi-metal, wheel semi-metal to the, the triple insulator. So see, see the gap open. So then uh, we measure the, the topological invariant. So measure, measure the quantum uh, metric. Uh, use the method, the sudden quench method we used it before. So these are the elements in uh, the quantum metric. So the theta, theta g, uh, theta one, as uh, the function theta two. So this is the experiment data, and these are the numerical simulation. So they are uh, agree very well. Then when we measure the the theta two and the theta, as a function of theta two and the theta one. So so uh, then we uh, have to integrate this. Uh, the 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 metric tense uh, the metric the quantum metric integrate it to get the uh, topological invariant here we call it it's a uh, uh, dix uh, uh dixmir invariant we in integrate uh, for this dimension it should be equal to one and we uh, so this is the experiment they measured, uh, and these are the, the numerical simulation. So they are green wheel with each other, and these are the. Uh, then we can choose the the parameter to see the the topological transition. So this topological uh, invariant change with parameters from zero to, to uh, one, then back to zero. We move the, uh, the multiple out of this manifold or inside this manifold. So uh, I think uh, uh, the, uh, for this experiment, we uh, report the first operation. We simulate the, this uh, uh, tensor uh, monopole and uh, uh, observe the metric, uh, quantum metric of this tensor monopole. And we uh, also observe the quantum topological phase transition of, in this system. And uh, uh, for finally, I want to acknowledge my, uh, uh, my co collaborators. Also, this uh, Shinsen basically uh, is uh, the uh, uh, who uh, did the experiment, and and also uh, this Dong uh, Nan uh, fabricate the the. Sample and uh, the uh, Yu Xin uh, working on the serial part, and also we collaborate with uh, South China Normal University Sliang group. Uh, Sliang uh, Dan Wei works on the serial part, and uh, uh, Zidan also uh, help us uh, propose this uh, technique so to do the quantum simulation um, with superconducting qubit. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention.
Okay, uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, for you for, 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 for this talk. So the session is now open for questions. So you can ask directly your question to uh, uh, Prof. Yu. Okay, so maybe, maybe let, let, let me ask the let me ask the, the first question. I mean, so you you have uh, uh, so you use this 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 uh, uh, will lack Hamiltonian, and then you you measure for this uh, uh, DD uh, uh, topological invariant. What I, I, I don't really uh, understand here uh, is, um, I mean, what what kind of um, uh, information or what what are the differences between uh, uh, measuring this uh, uh, this quantum matrix or measuring uh, the Berry uh, the Berry curvature? Is it uh, uh, more convenient somehow, as you say, to to measure the quantum matrix? But somehow, if you can measure the Berry curvature, the, the Information is the same, or, or there, there is more, or is it better than that? Uh, it's not the same, actually. So for the Berry curvature, we measure the, the so we do the uh, measure the uh, sigma uh, y. So on the y direction, the projection on the y direction, and also we do the uh, linear perturbation, a linear perturbation, mm -hmm. a small perturbation. But for the metric, so we measure the population on the excited states. Mm -hmm. So it's a different direction, measure different direction of the, the wave function of the, all the, the, the density metrics. Okay. Okay, so if there's any uh, other questions. So may, maybe let, let me ask you another question. I mean, so, uh, uh, so here you, you somehow, uh, um, I mean, use a single uh, qubit, or it's more than a qubit, it's, it's more... Uh, uh, a qubit. Uh, yes, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a three, uh, three bit somehow. That, that you are using. Uh, so uh, can you imagine that uh, 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 mimicking some, some, some also some interaction uh, uh, aspect of, of this system using more than, than one, one, uh, one, one three bits? So imagine that, I don't know, you have two, two, uh, two circuits that can interact uh, between them. Is it something realistic to imagine? So, uh, uh, to, to, to do with, with uh, uh, superconducting circuit, so. Yeah, that's a good question, actually. Uh, uh, we actually, we can use many qubits, but we still choose the energy levels of this system. We can form the multi-energy level system, so system and we drive the system, we can form the Hamiltonian we want. But the problem is uh, for the interaction, then the problem is uh, very uh, difficult for the superconducting qubits right now. Um, because uh, uh, for that, uh, we still haven't figured out how to add the, this kind of interaction in, in it. Right now, we can only uh, simulate this, that the tight band kind of like that. Yeah, so we still think about how do that. Uh, if we can do that, then that's very uh, interesting, actually. We can do a lot. I see. Okay. So any other question from the audience? Okay, so if there is not uh, any more questions, so I think we can uh, uh, we can stop the session now. So thank you very much, uh, for you uh, for for your talk and and for your very thank nice you. uh, very nice experimental work that uh, that you have done on this. I'm very impressed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.